Now, as well as watching some of the great elite level athletes and sports stars, we all like to be involved with sport. Well, we like to think we are, you know. It's so easy now just to chill on the sofa watching a game. It's so easy to play FIFA and think you're an athlete, but you're not really, you know. And one of the goals of a company and a charity called London Sport is to get one million, yes, one million Londoners more active. And we're going to be talking to one of their representatives in just a moment. But recently they held a conference called Sports 2.0, the Digital Revolution Conference, looking at the ways that technology can actually help people get more active. Have a look at this. Welcome to the BFI IMAX and welcome to Sport 2.0, the digital revolution continues. Technology and digital, an opportunity to get more people more active more of the time. So today what's been really exciting is the conversation about the juncture between sport and technology. And actually what's fantastic is we're only just starting, we're really scratching the surface. People have been really curious. They've been really interested to find out what's going on in the technology space, and particularly people from bigger established brands, just not even realizing that this exists. You know, it's a whole new world for them. So it's been exciting. This is two of my passions, sport and technology in the same place. And hopefully the outcome from today is that sport is finally recognizing it's behind the curve and needs to catch up as soon as possible. The really encouraging thing is, is how people can see the data that we're seeing on display today, how we can use it in a grand scale, and how we can build communities based on that, be it a large community or smaller. It was really exciting hearing about the startups who in February got that funding from London Sport, how much they've done with that already, where they're going with it, and to hear about the new startups and what they're going to be doing in the future. Let's look back in a few years' time to say this is the day the sport decides to do something. I felt like something's happening in terms of change. I've always said a change is going to come, and sport's been resistant to change. Today, in that auditorium, it seems as though there's an appetite. Something was happening in there. There's something brewing. It's going to be quite cool. Well, joining us now on Sportachino is the Director of Business Development for London Sport, Rada Balani. Welcome to Sportachino. Good morning. It's so great to have you on this morning. I know you've cleared your busy schedule. Normally you're spinning this time in the morning, is this right? Yeah, I'm normally teaching spin and circuits on a Wednesday morning. Oh, fantastic. Well, that is certainly one way to get people inspired to become more active. But one million people, one million Londoners getting more active is, is a high goal. What are the plans to try and achieve this? So we want to make London the most physically active city in the world. And we do this by building partnerships with everyone that is part of that journey. So anyone that wants to be part of physical activity and sport in London. And by building those partnerships with government, with funding bodies, with clubs, with the commercial world, we try to create a slightly easier, simpler, more effective and better resource system so that it works more effectively. OK, so, for example, how is it easier? What, what makes it easier? So one of the biggest things, and you'll have seen in that clip there, that we've really harnessed technology. So it's pretty easy to book a restaurant, book a flight. I can book a flight with my thumbprint. And it hasn't necessarily been easy for sport, for people to do that with sport and activity. So we've been working really hard to create a set and get them embedded within the industry of open data principles. And those are the things that allow people to book those holidays really, really easily. And it's, it's just really stealing what other sectors have done really, really well, and making it making sport an easier choice for people through technology in the same way that we have technology that drives the rest of our lives, like what we're doing right now, in fact. Mm. So were there any exciting partnerships you were able to make at that digital conference? Absolutely, and, and actually, through one of our biggest partnerships, with the Mayor of London, we have a fund called the Sport Technology Innovation Fund. And through that, we've invested in a number of small startups um, to see if they can test their ideas. So one really exciting one that I love is one called Fan Active. Um, and it's part of uh, the football clubs in London and their charitable arms. And they've harnessed that idea of being competitive and wanting to represent your club by um, 
getting the, their, their fans to compete against each other in terms of the number of steps that they do. And there's a little league table and you sort of feel like you're representing your club. You make social um, engagements and have connection um, and you're moving at the same time, which is great. Mm. So are we measuring here, when you say to get one million more active, is this one million people who've never done sport or is it to just get people who do it a little and, and get them doing it three, four, five times a week? It's both, actually. It's people doing nothing, doing something. People doing something, doing more. Okay. So if there is one sport to get someone, let's say, who's never done much sport before but knows they need to, do, need to lose a little bit of weight, what, what would you recommend that the steps are for them to do now? And is there any sport in particular you'd recommend for them? Do you know what? I, I think the most important thing that there uh, is that there's so much variety and choice that people can find the right thing for them. Um, but the, the most simple way really is to just build in daily activity into your daily life, whether that's getting off um, your public transport stop earlier. Not, don't take it at all, in fact. Um, walking up the escalators, walking down the escalators, adding little bits and pieces in, feeling the benefits, not just the physical ones, but the emotional, social, mental health benefits, and then slowly building it up and finding the ones that are right for you. That, uh, yesterday, parkour became um, an officially recognized sport. So, you know, you've got something like parkour, you've got all of your traditional sports. The point is that there, is, there should be something out there for everyone. Yeah, someone in fact put on our Facebook page a comment saying that the tube strikes and the southern rail strikes are actually helping getting more people active Absolutely. in London. Albeit, I don't <laughs> think that's part of your strategy. <laughs> to be perfectly honest, active travel is part of our strategy. Not necessarily making uh, tube strikes, but um, certainly, you know, the, the opportunity a tube strike gives is really to help people understand how easy it is to get around without necessarily having to rely on public transport. Yeah, there might be a few more people who've gone, it's been easy to get to work without using a tube. Maybe I'll do this walk every single day or exactly. twice a week. No, very interesting. And next week you have the London Sports Awards. Tell us a little bit more about that, Rada. Sure. It's our annual celebration of the greatest achievements in grassroots sport and physical activity. There are eight award categories this year. We had over 340 nominations. And those categories are everything from Club of the Year, Coach of the Year, Volunteer of the Year, to slightly different awards, um, organisations that have done great things to bring more resources into the sector or organisations that really harness the power of elite sport to inspire the next generation and everything in between. And it's really important that we celebrate all of the great work that happens every single day around this great city um, and as you probably know most of the people that are involved in grassroots sport do it for the love and they often go unrecognized so this is our opportunity to recognize that and inspire others to be part of it they're at indigo at the o2 they're on thursday the 19th of january and it'd be wrong of me not to say that tickets are still available they're 35 quid a throw or uh, 250 pounds for a ticket at a table of eight um, come along it's a wonderful wonderful night out we've got some great guest speakers and we have a fantastic host in David Garrido. Wonderful. I think we've got a link on the Facebook page and on the YouTube page. If we haven't, I will put a link up so people can yeah. buy tickets directly for that event. It'd be wonderful if they can join you there. All right, Ryder, just before you go, why don't you tell us how we can continue to learn more about London Sport through your social media channels and through your website, please? Sure. So uh, you can get us on londonsport.org. That's our website. Our Twitter is at londonsport. And we would love to hear from you. Um, let us know what you think, what you want to do. And if you want to be part of um, sport in London, if you want to get, in, get more involved, um, also check out getactivelondon.com. And that will help you find the right activity, stay in it and reach your potential. Wonderful. Well, I hope you can achieve that target. In fact, I hope you smash that target because I, I think it's really important that people do get more active and that's something we certainly try to do here on Sportacino every single morning. Rada Balani, the Director of Business Development for London Sport, thank you so much for being on the show this morning. A pleasure.